In the last video of this series we added ray traced shadows, point light sources and colored lighting. In this video we are going to add ray traced reflections and the ability to change colors of our objects. So here I have the file from the last video. So the first thing I want to do is I want to be able to control the color and the reflectivity of our objects. So I'm going to add two more inputs to our sphere node. So at the bottom one will be the color and a float for the reflectivity. So the color should be white by default. Let's set it to 0.9 and the reflectivity should be between 0 and 1 and by default 0. So I will set these all to 0.9. Now of course if we change the values here they don't have any effect. Here at the end we get the final distance and we want to do the same for the color and the reflectivity. So we need to pass two more values through all these nodes. And each of these sphere nodes is going to add its own color and reflectivity to these values. So let's move these two up. Let's add one combined RGB node. This will be our color. By default it will be zero. And one value node for our reflectivity. Now we need to add two inputs and two outputs so they get passed through these nodes. And we can hide both of these values. And at the output tab we will also add the color and the float for the reflectivity. Now we can pass these values through. And at the end we can also output our color and reflectivity data. So as we said, every sphere node is going to add its own information to it. So inside the sphere node, so here we get the previous values and we want to replace them by the new values based on a mask. So we can add a mix RGB node and we will mix between the previous color and the new color. And although the mix RGB node is for color, we can also use it for numbers. And then we need a mask. And we already did the same thing for our normal information. And we can just reuse the mask here. And at the end we just output this. So if we now display our color information, we see that all the objects are white as we set them. And if we change them now, let's say we make this red, this one blue and this one green. We could basically say that this is the albedo value, which means how much light the surface is reflecting per color channel. And what we have here, the shading data, this was basically how much light the surface is receiving per color channel. We can combine them by multiplying them, so the amount that the surface receives multiplied by how much it reflects. And we can also do the same for the reflectivity. If we display the reflectivity we get black because we have it set to zero for all objects. But now we can change them per object. So we can create a mask how reflective each object should be. And we will need this for later. But first let's group all this three inputs and one output. So let's call this node our shade hit point node. Okay, how can we add reflections? So right now if this is our sphere and we have our camera somewhere here and we shoot a ray, we get a hit point. If a light ray hits a perfectly smooth surface, these two angles are the same. So the ray direction gets mirrored across the surface normal. So here is our ray direction. Here's the surface normal. So here's how the reflected ray would look like with these two angles the same. And there is a simple formula to do this. But in Blender we have a built-in node for this. So we don't have to implement this ourselves. So now we have to shoot a reflection ray. Now the new starting point of the reflected ray is the first hit point. So the first hit point is going to be the new starting point, the new ray origin. And to get the new ray direction, 
we have to reflect this ray that we got from the camera. So we can use a vector mass node. And here we have the reflect function. We give it our ray direction. And we want to now reflect this ray direction across the surface normal of our first hit point. And this is our new ray direction. And now this node is shooting a new ray and intersecting all our objects in the scene again. So for example we can display the new hit normal. And this already looks a bit like a reflection. On all pixels here we hit the sphere, then the ray gets reflected and we get the surface normal from the floor. Now what we can do is we can shade this new hit point. So here above we shaded the first hit point and we got this image. And now we can also shade the new hit point. So we plug in all the information in that we need. So now our spheres are perfectly reflective, 100% reflective. But inside the reflections they are not reflective. This is because we are only rendering the first reflection bounds. So we can call this our first reflection bounds. To combine this we have to mix between them. So we can use a mix RGB node. And now we can blend between these two values. So we can now control how much reflections we see on the surface. So this is basically our reflectivity. And we can also use our mask from before, the reflectivity from our first hit point. So we can change them in here for each object. So if you want to add more reflection bounces, we could do the same again. Let's just copy this. So this will be our second reflection bounce. And we start from the old hit point. So in this example first we shoot a ray. It reflects and hits something else. And now we start from this point and shoot another ray from this hit point. So this hit point is going to be our new starting point. And the old reflected ray direction has to be reflected based on the previous normal vector. And now we get the reflections inside the reflections. You could add them here, mix them together, but this would be wrong. We cannot overlay the new reflection bounces on top of the entire image. So the order matters. These reflections are part of this reflection bounce. So we have to mix them based on the reflectivity and then mix them here. And this is now correct. And you could add more and more reflection bounces, but this is very slow. And here we hit the limitations of Blender because we can't do any loops or recursive functions. Now I want to talk about the so-called Fresnel effect. So in this photo, here at the bottom we can see through the water and we can see the rocks on the ground. But if we look up more towards the horizon, we only see very strong reflections. If you are standing in water and you look straight down, you can see the ground. But if you look far into the distance, you can only see the rocks and the mountains in the background, in the reflections on the water. Why is that? When you look down, the angle between the surface and your camera ray, in some sense, is much greater than here when you look into the distance. I don't want to get into the physics, there is a formula how we can calculate this. But in our case, let's just use a very simple approximation. So in our ray tracer, if we have our camera here, if we shoot a ray in this direction, then we have a different angle than if we look perpendicular to it, to the surface. And here as well. So towards the edges of the sphere, we get a lot more reflections. So what we need to do is we have to measure the angle between the ray direction and our surface normal. So this angle here in our case, because we already have the surface normal and we can just use the dot product for this. So we are doing the same as when we compare the lighting vector and the surface normal vector to get our shading. So in Blender we have to adjust the reflectivity amount based on the ray direction and the surface normal vector. And we can do this inside the shoot ray node. 
let's do this here at the end. So let's use the dot product between the surface normal and the ray direction. This was the bottom one here. We can display this. And let's display our reflectivity. And now this is all black. Because the dot product here is negative. We can use a math node and raise this by 1. So we already have some sort of gradient here. And we can raise it to the power of, uh, let's say, 5. Mm, let's do 4.5. And now we can use this new reflectivity amount to blend between our minimum reflectivity and our maximum reflectivity. So the maximum is 1, 100% reflective. And for the minimum reflectivity, we could just use our reflectivity mask. It is not physically accurate, but in our case, it's completely fine, I guess. So let's go back and display this. And now you can see that we have a gradient here. So towards the edge of the sphere, we have more reflections than in the center. But as you can see, if we have the reflectivity at zero, we still get this Fresnel effect. To avoid this, we can just multiply this with a mask. So we check if our reflectivity is greater than like 0 0.001. So if it's smaller than that number, so if it's zero, this node will also be zero. And now we have no reflections at zero. And if we raise the reflections a bit, we get it back. So let's call this Fresnel effect.